Good morning, YouTubes. Say hi, Tanner. What's up? We gotta fix that thing again. Go get animals. I'll talk to you later. Okay, folks, we finally got them. These guys are, uh, for lack of a better term, complete royal. So, yeah, we're gonna work them. Yeah. You know, I told you I messaged Muck Boot. Yep. They emailed me back the other day. Your boots will be here on the 23rd. We got her dead. It sucked. But we got her dead. We had some really unruly cattle. The last bunch worked out a lot better for us. So anyway, folks, we'll see you tomorrow. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be mine? At her again. Where we got more animals to process. More of them crazy Louisiana critters. It's going to be a great sloppy day. When it's really hard to keep a funnel around, you, you cut your uh, your Vetramec bottles up <laughs> and pull the rubber plug out of them. It's right in there. All nice like. Now if I can get the kerosene in here. Oh man, I spilled more than I wanted. That's okay. It's kind of cold out for all these animals. And the best way to keep it warm, put it in a trash can and turn your heater on it. Keeps everything loose enough that you can squeeze your handle really good up there. A little bit of drama in the feed yard today. Our neck extender broke down here, so we had to do a fix on it. Well, but, a, uh, set, set yeah, bolt? just a set bolt right there. Oh, shut up. Where did that go? Oh, doesn't that just, it just insert, oh, the bolt broke, I'm sorry. We're doing awesome, we're doing awesome. Only, only another 300 head to work or 200 and some head to work, I think. More? Yeah. It's kind of windy, little cloud cover. I'm headed up to physical therapy. We got like 1,600 head of cattle that need to get processed this week, so might just be all videos of processing cattle, which gets really boring. Love you. Stay awesome. We're doing this again. Can't remember how many I thought. <clears throat> I thought there was only 400 and some odd heads left, but I could be way wrong. Now if I got a whole bunch of implants opened up. Check a needle on this thing. You'll probably be getting changed today too. I can now wake up this morning. Need more coffee. Hang on, I need more coffee. Oh, coffee, I love you. Got them worked. Heifers and steers are all sorted. We're gonna take them home so they can eat. And they don't have, to, now they can just battle with each other as far as sex goes. Then they don't have to battle with steers. So, that's pretty all right. It's a windy day in the neighborhood, a windy day in the neighborhood. I suppose it'll be. Now I gotta do some cleanup because it's it's a nightmare. Oh. We'll do a little more explaining on this bud box here. Hang on one second. Okay, this huge long alley here is what we call our drover's alley. So we'll bring animals down here, and yes, they will run to the end and they will hit that gate, and then we'll they'll turn around and, and they'll go back that way. And hopefully we have that all shut up before they uh, come back on us. We've got, uh, we've got two 
other alley gates in here with this place. So this first one here we call the halfway gate. And it is, it is not exactly halfway, but it's pretty close. Then we have another one on this side, way down there, that we call the three-quarter gate. And uh, if we can get all the animals past that three-quarter gate and shut it, because our cowboys would be out there pen checking, or maybe they got to just to sort a few off somewhere and need a place to go with them, they still have a spot to go with them then. They're not just wandering around the feed alley that way. Now, say there's a hundred head in here, and they're all due for uh, for initials anyway. Most, I will say, I'll say, you could probably get about a hundred of them right up here. Pretty decent, depending on size. Uh, we'll probably take about 70 of them, shut the halfway gate there, and they'll all have this room here. And then we just peel off, you know, so you got 70 animals sitting back here. We just peel off like, I don't know, 10, eight to 10 at a time. And we bring them up. And usually they just kind of hang out right down there. Then we grab this gate and we'll bring it around. It's kind of windy today. So we bring it around. And we shut it like that. Okay. So now they can't see any of the animals back there. But once you're in this close, close range, close vicinity to them, they're kind of they they're a little they're a little nervous. They're a little nervous, but most of them aren't too bad. That all goes <laughs> goes back to where they came from. Them Louisiana ones we hit we just worked. Ooh, they don't really like people all that much. But okay, anyway. So you shut that. You just walk around the animals like so and they'll kind of circle back that way some of them might circle back this way but you get your animals going you grab this gate here and you just kind of squeeze them in like so so you, you slam latch but you squeeze them in like so and then normally i will say i will say 85% of the time, they'll go down on their own. Not all the time, though. You got to help them out sometimes. Um, animals like to come or go out the same way they came in. So by mimicking, pushing them down here, you're mimicking them just wanting to turn around and go back that way, right? But you've shut the gate. So it just, it just drives them. It just kind of drives them right down. I'm hoping this is a little better of an explanation. I really suck at talking. Okay, I gotta go back to washing because I gotta get that all cleaned out. It's gross, ew. First, the pre-soak and then the wash. She's clean now. She is clean. Look at that. You can see the floor. You can see the mats. Good morning, folks. How is everybody? We are back in Charlotte today. Yow. We got a convoy this morning. she looks good she also got in the midst of this a new exhaust put on and the door on the other side got adjusted a little bit because one of those high wind days I went up to meet and fed and the door got jerked out of my hand so it started squeaking and a creaking You guys look really good you guys look really good you're putting up with the weather's a heck of a lot better than I am
everything but about 200 acres or so. Uh, we're, a, we're a commercial farm, an organic farm. We raise mama cows and feed some beef to feed America. But I try to put my foot more in with the cows because I love cows. Where's 924? There you are. There's 924. What you doing, Mama? You still don't like me, do you? Look out, girls. I'm gonna feed you. Did I fed a little extra heavy? Shh, don't tell anybody. A little bit of ice in the line, but I got her running. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought I was gonna have to feed these girls, but apparently the Bueller and Oswald needed to be separated. Did not run over the GoPro. Man, I haven't done that in a long time. Got it within a hundred pounds and being at the end of the bunk. I'd say that's pretty slick. Let's go back up to B1 here, which is all the way down there where they're cleaning right now. I'll put some food in that bunk. Then those animals will have happy, nice bedding and food and they'll be like hey you guys are taking care of us because you guys are awesome and i'll be like you're dang right a lot of guys are putting these barns up i i personally am not a big fan of them i think they are too high maintenance for what oh mama too high maintenance for what uh what goes on here <laughs> i mean the, the, the convenience of them is somewhat nice because you can um, put a lot more animals in a smaller area, but, but man, you can't do anything out here one person. It's always got to be two people out here, whether it's pulling an animal, doing maintenance work, cleaning the barns out as you can tell they're doing right now. Then we just throw cornstalk bales in on top. This is what we call the scrape alley right here. In between the gate posts there. That's what we call the scrape alley. And we try to keep that cleaned out once a week. Or we have to clean it out once a week. Otherwise it just gets so bad with all them animals standing at the bunk line here. One nice thing about this is we used to tear those bales all apart. Cut them with knife, get all the net wrap off, spread them out, blah, blah, blah. Now we just get as much of the net wrap off as we can. You really don't want animals eating that. That gets caught down in their honeycomb, the first stomach it comes to, and then it's not good. It's not good. Um, so we get all the net wrap off, and then we just turn the animals back in there, and they have their way with it. I mean, they just destroy them bales way better than we can spread them out. So why not let them have their fun? A little bit of exercise, you know? Like, like, kind of like when you go to one of them, uh, what are they now? They call them tramp those trampoline centers or whatever, when you used to be able to go to one of them things. It's kind of like that for these animals. They, <laughs> they like to have fun with those bales. Implants out for you. No, you ought to ask my wife, I'll argue with you. <laughs> I'm sure she wins all the time. Every time. The only time I ever get to win is when I'm at work. What makes you think you can't get to win this time? I just, I just know. I just know. <laughs> drama in the feed yard this morning <laughs> okay folks we've got initials to do tanner and doug are fighting on who gets to uh do implants over there but we've got initials which means tags vaccinations 
drench, pour on, implant. Oh, we gotta cut the tails too. Yeah, gotta cut the tails. We don't like mud balls on the end of them. So we try to keep them somewhat clean. We nailed it, we got it done. The total weight for that entire pin, look at that. 112,888 pounds. It's wash day. So we're gonna wash that and the other four wheeler. Just as long as you learn something from my stupidity. <laughs> All right, folks, I love you. Stay awesome.